Hello, my name is Cassandra. I am a FAIR volunteer. I currently serve as the board chairman of FAIR, and we are so excited about all of the amazing presentations we heard at our recent annual FAIR conference that we decided to start this video series in order to give you just a brief summary of all of the things that we learned. This first video summary is going to be about the presentation given by Neil Rapoli. Neil is an incredible person, a friend of mine, and he is part of pretty much the cutest family ever. You may have seen his wife Jasmine in the great videos that she does for Scripture Central. And he also works for Scripture Central and produces great scholarship and projects for them. His presentation was titled, and this is a mouthful, Material Plates, Spiritual Vision, Martin Harris, Divine Materiality, and Seeing with Spiritual Eyes. Now, it's a mouthful because there is a lot of backstory to this presentation. So the three witnesses of the Book of Mormon were called by God in order to give us evidence about both the existence of the golden plates and also evidence that this work was divine, that it really was of God. The eight witnesses to the Book of Mormon got to see and handle the plates and then the three witnesses of the Book of Mormon, and Martin Harris was one of those three witnesses, not only got to see and handle the plates, but also saw the angel Moroni and heard from him. Now, with the testimony of those witnesses, we can have that evidence that there really were plates, that Joseph didn't just make it all up. However, Martin Harris, in his description of his experience, seeing and handling the plates and seeing and hearing from the angel Moroni, he used the phrase spiritual eyes. He said that he saw the plates with his spiritual eyes. Now, some people who um, like to criticize the church and its history, um, they have made the argument that because Martin used those words, it means that he didn't actually see actual plates, that it's not good evidence of actual plates. Instead, they say that Martin must have meant he merely saw a vision. It was more of an out-of-body experience, more of something like a daydream. It's not evidence of real plates. What Neil has done has gone through a mountain of evidence. Um, he looks into the meanings of words as they were used back in Joseph Smith and Martin Harris's time. He looks into Martin Harris's other writings and records that we have about how he thought about things, how he believed, what did he think about the distinction between material, meaning actual physical objects, the distinction between material physical objects and spiritual things on the other hand. Um, did Martin draw that distinction between something that you can hold and touch and feel on one hand or something spiritual that you cannot on the other? And Neil makes a really great case that the answer is no. Um, that Martin instead was drawing on a long lifetime of study of the Bible um, in which there are certain uh, occasions told that being able to see spiritual things, the things of God, like angels or objects from God, um, was not always good for one's health and well-being. And um, there's the verse that you can't see the face of God and live, for example. And so Martin desired so much to be able to see God that he knew it took a lot of great spiritual preparation in order to be able to um, be a witness to spiritual things. I am very much simplifying a pretty complex argument. Neil has a lot of sources and a lot of analysis that he brings to bear on this topic, but the conclusion is that there is not um, enough historical evidence to support the claim that Martin was saying, oh, I didn't actually see or hold plates, I didn't actually see or, or hear an angel. In fact, we can take Martin at his word, all of his other words, he made a lot of statements to this effect throughout his life, that there were plates, that he did hold them, he did um, feel them in his hands, he did not just have some um, dreamy, ineffable experience, he was really literally a witness of the actual plates. 
So if you were wondering why on earth we would get into the weeds with um, such a topic as this, some, some statement that Martin Harris made several hundred years ago, why does it matter? The reason is that if you or a loved one um, ever runs into this accusation online, we want to be able to have an answer for you. We always want to be able to have an answer. And this accusation is out there. You can run into it pretty easily if you go into certain corners of the internet. If someone gets curious and is looking for more information and goes to sources that are critical rather than faithful. Um, and so part of the mission of FAIR is to be able to equip you and your family with the information, the answers that you need to be able to know that there are answers. There is always going to be a way that God has provided for us to choose faith. If we want to believe, there is always a way to choose faith. I'm so grateful that God always raises up scholars and researchers to give us the answers that we need and the time that we need them. And I'm grateful that FAIR is able to um, commission this conference and provide these answers for you. So look in the future for a transcript of Neil's presentation to go up. You can read it in more detail there. His, an expanded version of his presentation is also available in a volume um, celebrating the scholarly contributions of Professor Daniel Peterson. And I will link to that below. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, please write to us if you have any questions. And please donate if you love the work we do. Thanks.